The water of Leith is a river which runs through some densely populated parts of the city of Edinburgh. In April 2000, following exceptionally heavy rains, the water of Leith burst its banks and caused devastating floods which damaged some 500 properties. This is just one of a long series of flooding events that residents here have witnessed over the years. Over the past 30 years, the portion of the world's population living in flood-prone river basins has increased by 114% and that of those living in coastlines threatened by cyclones and associated storm surges has increased by 192%. Flooding accounts for the largest share of natural disasters. The most common form of flooding is due to heavy rainfall when watercourses do not have the capacity to hold the excess water. However, floods are not only caused by heavy rainfall, they can also be a result of other phenomena, such as tsunamis, high tides coinciding with high river levels, or storm surges, which occur when low pressure weather systems, such as tropical cyclones, raise the water level. These affect in particular coastal areas. Other causes, like dam failure or glacier lake outbursts, are not confined to low-lying regions and can result in flooding even in dry weather conditions. Particularly when flooding has an impact on human lives or infrastructure, timely and accurate information on such events is crucial. SAR provides valuable information on all stages of the flood disaster life cycle, including prevention, mitigation and recovery. SAR-derived digital elevation models are used as input to flood models that predict water runoff and accumulation in the event of flooding. When flooding occurs, SAR is often the only available remote sensing technique that can penetrate habitually dense rain clouds which coincide with most flooding events. The clear transition from smooth water to rough land surfaces translates into a corresponding transition from low to high backscatter. This enables clear delineation of water surfaces. The distinction between floodwaters and permanent water bodies can be made through a comparison of the SAR image acquired during or soon after the flood with the corresponding archive image acquired before the flood event. To achieve best results, both images must have the same geometrical characteristics, including pass and incidence angle, and also the same frequency and polarization. To ensure the availability of such a matching archive image is exactly why systematic identical mode acquisition scenarios are so important, such as those adopted for the Copernicus Sentinel missions. The detectability of the extent of flooding in SAR data depends on the contrast between water areas and the surrounding land, which is highly influenced by surface roughness characteristics and the system-specific parameters, wavelengths, incidence angle and polarization. An open flood surface can be detected in SAR data as it acts as a specular reflector which scatters the radar energy away from the sensor. 
This causes relatively dark pixels of low backscatter in the SAR data. In contrast, the surrounding non-water areas usually exhibit a higher signal return due to increased surface roughness. A higher contrast ratio between water and non-water areas occurs at higher SAR system frequencies. Consequently, water monitoring using X-band SAR is more suitable than using longer wavelengths, for example in the X and L-band domain. An increase in water surface roughness due to wind increases the backscatter over water and therefore decreases the flood mapping capability. Also, the type of polarization plays an important role in detecting open water bodies. The polarization describes the restriction of the electromagnetic waves to a single plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the SAR signal. Polarimetric SAR systems transmit either in horizontal H or vertical V plane, which can be received horizontally or vertically. Thus, there can be two possibilities of copolarization, HH, VV, and cross polarization, HV and VH. HH polarization provides the best discrimination between water and non water terrain. This is caused by a low scattering of the horizontal component of the signal from the smooth open water surface. An increase in surface roughness reduces the ability to discriminate between water and land comparably more using VV than using HH polarization. There are several factors which may lead to an overestimation of the flood extent in flood mapping. These are related to objects which have a similar backscatter than open water surfaces, so-called water lookalikes. These are for example smooth natural surface features such as sand surfaces and bare ground, anthropogenic features such as streets or radar shadowing effects behind vertical objects such as vegetation, buildings and topography. Microwaves have the capability to penetrate into media, therefore in comparison to optical sensors, SAR offers a unique opportunity to detect inundation beneath vegetation. This is enabled by multiple bounce effects. The penetrated radar pulse is backscattered from the horizontal water surface and lower section of the vegetation. This results in an increased signal return in comparison to non-flood conditions as diffuse scattering on the dry ground reduces the corner reflection effect. Generally, the capability of microwaves to penetrate into the vegetation canopy increases with the system wavelengths. Therefore, L-band SAR sensors, which operate at a wavelength of at about 23 centimeters, have proven to be very effective to detect flooding in forests. In data of SAR sensors operating with shorter wavelengths, such as X and C-band SAR sensors, canopy attenuation volume and surface scattering from the top layer of the forest canopy is generally higher. This reduces the effect of double bound scattering and the detectability of the flooding beneath the vegetation. As dual or quad polarized SAR data provide more information of the ground structural and geometric properties than single pole data, polarimetric SAR imagery enable a more accurate separation of flooded and non-flooded forest areas. Various methods exist for detecting flooding in SAR data. These are based on visual image interpretation, thresholding such as empirical or automatic thresholding, change detection procedures based on multi-temporal SAR data or contextual classifiers such as object or texture-based approaches, region growing procedures, active contour models or Markov random field models. Usually several approaches are combined to improve the flood mass extraction. Also the integration of auxiliary data sets such as digital elevation models, slope information, topographic indices and land cover information can significantly support the flood mapping process. Fully operational automatic flood mapping services are already existing based on SAR data such as of the Sentinel-1 and Terrasa X satellites. These services cover the whole processing, starting from automatic data ingestion, pre-processing, classification and dissemination. These services are very useful to provide users crisis information in near real time and are used, for example, to support the operational crisis response activities of the International Charter Space and Major Disasters. 
SAR is already operationally used for flood disaster management. The International Charter for Space and Major Disasters, for example, is an attempt among satellite data providers worldwide to provide a unified system of space data acquisition and delivery to those affected by disasters. Most of the disasters for which the Charter is activated are caused by flooding, and for these, SAR sensors are the priority tasking. The Copernicus Emergency Mapping Service also provides operational information on flooding events using a large constellation of SAR sensors from its partner agencies, and it supports all stages of the disaster life cycle. To minimise the risk of flooding, Edinburgh City Council is right now carrying out an extensive phase of development, including the construction of walls and embankments, floodgates and pumping stations along stretches of the river. It is hoped that these measures may protect the city from future flooding events. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reports increasing trends in extreme precipitation in areas already prone to such events. This implies there may be greater risks of flooding in, on a regional scale. The impact of these events on human lives and property is likely to, to rise given population growth forecasts. The need, therefore, for information to support flood prevention and mitigation in the future can only increase.